Hi friends, this is Nikesh. So up to the last uh, videos, we have studied the effect of placing a resistor, inductor and capacitor individually in AC circuit and we have placed combination of all RC also in the series circuit and we have seen how the phase angle between voltage and current which is nothing but the power factor angle has uh, changed what will be its sign plus or minus what will be the impedance of the circuit, impedance angle plus or minus and apparent power, active power, all such sorts of things we have studied here. Now what we will do is a very interesting thing. Now we will place all the three R, L, C in series. Okay? In series we are going to place R, L and C and I am applying some voltage, AC sinusoidal voltage V is equal to Vm sin omega D. This is the same equation. If I am supposed to write it in polar form, how can I write it in polar form? In polar form, this will be equal to, let us say, this is V of T, isn't it? So, in polar form, the same thing I can write. What do you require in polar form? You require magnitude and angle. So, what is the magnitude? You can see visible over here in this equation. Vm is the magnitude at an angle. What is the angle here? Vm sin omega T plus some no angle is there. So, it is 0 degree. So, in polar form, this is the voltage. Okay, now we are having the current. Now this current is flowing through which elements resistor, inductor and capacitor. For example, let us say, if current is flowing only through the resistor, there is only resistor in the circuit. Then we know that if only resistor is there in the circuit, the phase angle between voltage and current will be 0. So what is the angle of voltage 0 degrees? The current angle also would have been 0 degrees. So let us write the sinusoidal equation for current also. So the sinusoidal equation for current I of t will be equal to I am sin omega t. So, if, if there be any angle, is the question. For example, if there is only resistive network, it would be same as the voltage, same angle, 0 degrees only. But now you are having inductor and a capacitor. So, due to inductor, the current will try to go down, that is lagging below the voltage. If there is a capacitor, the current will try to go above the voltage vector, that is, lead the voltage. That thing we know. But now you are having both inductor and capacitor. So, the net lagging or leading of the current depends upon the values of inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. So, finally my conclusion is that somehow there will be some angular difference. Okay? So, let us say that will be some plus or minus phi. So, this is how we write the current equation here and in polar form the same current equation magnitude and angle. So, plus or minus angle will be there. So, in polar form this is the voltage, in polar form this is the current. Okay? That is about uh, the current and voltage equation. Now I am applying some total voltage V of T and uh, this total voltage is being dropped or shared by the series connected elements, resistor and inductor has its own reactance which will drop the voltage XL and capacitor has its own reactance XC. Okay, they all will be dropped. So applying the principle of Ohm's law, we know that voltage drop across an element, let us say if it is resistor, Vr will be equal to current through the resistor into opposing quantity. What is the opposing quantity in the resistor? Resistance is the opposing quantity. And voltage drop in the inductor will be current through the inductor into opposing quantity that is XL. Similarly for capacitive current or voltage also, I into XC. So these are the voltages and uh, voltages dropped across each of these three elements. Now what I will try to do is I will make a vector diagram. Since current is common in all three elements, for, this, for the purpose of drawing the vector diagram, I will take current as reference as we did here. So this is the reference base line. Here I will place the current vector. Okay, this is the current vector. Okay, what is this? I of the current. It is reference. I am taking this side. Okay, it's not standard. I am taking this. Diagram. Now, what will be the voltage Vr across the resistor? So in a resistor, voltage of the resistor Vr and current will be at zero degrees always. So let us say this is Vr vector. Okay, this is Vr voltage across the resistor. Both are how current and voltage zero degrees. Next, you have voltage across the inductor Vl. Okay, and voltage across the inductor and current through the inductor. What is the relation? Current lags voltage or voltage gives current by 90 degrees. Okay, so this is the current. Where should be the voltage? Voltage should be leaving the current on the top, isn't it? So what I will do is I will. I will write this is the voltage vector Vm. Okay, it is leading 90 degrees to the current. This is the current at 0 degrees and voltage Vl, okay, voltage through the inductor, voltage across the inductor will be leading by 90 degrees. Now, we will look at capacitor. In a capacitor, what is the relation? Opposite relation. That is, current leads the voltage or voltage lags the current. So, if this is the current, voltage across the capacitor will be something like this downwards. Vc. Okay, Vc. 
Now, what is the total voltage is my question. Now, if you observe voltage across the inductor and voltage across the capacitor. What is the angle of voltage across the inductor? It is plus 90 degrees. What is the angle of voltage across the capacitor? Minus 90 degrees. Or in complex notation, I can write this is JBL or I can write this is JVC minus JVC, isn't it? So you are putting J means these both are imaginary quantities and how these imaginary quantities there? One is plus, the other one is minus and that means both are opposite. So my conclusion here is the voltage across inductor and capacitor. In our exams, in most of the PSUs or SSC based examinations, they will ask you in RLC CD circuit, you will give you the parameters and tell you find the voltage across the inductor and capacitor alone. Voltage across inductor and capacitor alone. Now you only tell me what will be the net voltage across inductor and capacitor. See, both are in phase opposition, isn't it? One is going downwards, the other one is going upwards. One is plus J, the other one is minus J. And both of them are imaginary quantities only. So, the net voltage across inductor and capacitor will be subtraction difference between these both voltages. Yes. Okay. Vn minus Vc. So, this is not exactly minus symbol. This indicates that whoever is greater will come on the on this side. That means, for example, if Vl is greater than Vc, I will write Vl minus Vc. If Vc is greater than Vl, then Vl, Vc minus Vl like this. Okay. That is the meaning of that symbol. Okay. What whomever, is, whomever may be greater, that will be there. For example, let us take this example only. For example, I will suppose that VL value is equal to some 10 volts. Okay, VL value equal to some 10 volts. I am saying that VC value equal to some 5 volts. Okay, VC value equal to some 5 volts. So 10 volts is in this direction, positive direction. 5 volts in the negative direction. Now what will be the net? 10 minus 5 will be plus 5. That means the net effective voltage across these reactive elements. L and C will be something plus 5 volts, okay? Plus 5 volts would be the net. So the total voltage across the circuit would be, this is the total voltage across the circuit. Now if you see the total voltage, how it is related to the current, leading or lagging? Voltage is leading the current. If voltage is leading the current, that means current is lagging the voltage. And current lagging the voltage means what circuit is it? It is an inductive circuit. Understood? So this is the case of an inductive circuit. So I am calling this inductive circuit, how can you say that? Why? Because, now you see, VL is equal to 10 volts, VC is equal to 5 volts. That means, if in a circuit, VL is greater than VC, that is voltage drop across the, across the inductor is greater than voltage drop across the capacitor, then what is the nature of the circuit? The circuit is inductive nature. Because this fundamental question rises, Sir, earlier when we were dealing, you are having only a resistor and inductor, or you are having only a resistor or a capacitor, in this way it was there. So, under this condition, if it is RL circuit, we would directly say it is an inductive circuit. And if it is RC circuit, we would directly say a capacitive circuit. But here, both L and C are there. How can we decide whether it is an inductive nature circuit or a capacitive nature circuit? So, that basically depends upon this parameter. And to be more precise, what is the value of VL? VL value is I into XL. What is the value of VC? I into XC. I, I get cancelled out because I is common in both. This is my original condition. If inductive reactance of the circuit is greater than capacitive reactance in the circuit, then the circuit behavior is inductive. Inductive circuit means what? Current lacks the voltage by some angle phi. If capacitive reactance is greater than inductive reactance, that means the voltage drop across the capacitor will be more. Then it is a capacitive nature circuit. That is current leads the voltage by some angle phi. If inductive reactance and capacitive reactance are equal, so and then what happens is it is a resistive nature circuit. Resistive nature circuit. So I told you that current and uh, so we were telling that the voltage across inductor and capacitor are in opposition. That directly means that even the net reactance of the circuit will be opposition of this both. That means net reactance can be written as XL minus XC. Why? Right? Because both are energy storage elements and both are reactive elements. And one is leading direction, the other one is lagging direction. That means the net reactive effect will be subtraction of this both, XL minus XC. So that is called as the net reactance of this circuit. And if net reactance is, for, is zero, if net reactance is zero, when will it happen? When XL is equal to XC, 
Then what is the nature of the circuit? It is resistive nature of the circuit. That condition is called as series resonance circuit. Series resonance condition. So in next upcoming videos, we will very beautifully discuss about resonance because basically resonance is also a, one of my favorite topic in circuits. I will very beautifully and you will be really enjoying watching that lecture because I will be relating it with some generalized uh, real life behaviors and uh, and I will be trying to explain about the resonance concept, both series and parallel resonance and all the possible formulae, everything regarding resonance so that you will not miss any examination starting from a J level examination and if you are a graduate watching this, even a gate examination also you will exactly, you will, you will just smash down the question, that's it so in that we will discuss about resonance but for up to now, just be convinced with that Net reactance is equal to zero. That means inductive and capacitive reactances are equal. Means net reactance will become zero. Only opposing quantity will be resistance. That is a resistive nature of circuit. Okay. So that is about some important conclusions. And uh, if you are supposed to find out what is the total voltage across the circuit, then the total voltage will be V R square plus V L minus V C. It depends upon who is greater, whole space. So this is the net voltage of the circuit. Or I the total supply voltage and Net reactance of the circuit will be XL minus XC, this thing we know, and the power factor angle or the impedance angle of the circuit will be equal to tan inverse of net reactance divided by the resistive component. Okay, this is the power factor of the circuit. Okay, that is the power factor of the circuit. Suppose I told you if net reactance is equal to 0, tan inverse of 0 will be tan inverse of 0 will be 0, isn't it? Then what will be the power factor cos phi? Cos 0 will be equal to 1. So, for a resistive circuit, okay, or if a circuit net reactance is equal to 0, the power factor of the circuit is 1, unity power factor, okay. We will discuss about this later anyhow. So, these are some important conclusions that you must be uh, clear with up to this point of time, okay, up to this point of time. And uh, in the next video, we will try to explore some uh, questions and, uh, uh, and then we will jump into resonance also. We will discuss some uh, aspects about this one also and then we will try to move on, okay. Thank you for watching.